Welcome to Grant Seeking Module 2, Creating a Logic Model. Hello, I'm Becky White, and I'm in the Organization Development and Evaluation Unit, serving as a resource specialist for grant development. My role is to assist those interested in seeking grants. These web-based training modules are designed to help a beginner in grant seeking to get started. To get ready for this training, you will need to pause the training, go back to the ODE Unit SharePoint site in the online training folder and print out the related materials found in the folder. These include the logic model guide, program logic model examples, a checklist for logic models, and two logic model worksheets. Now you're ready to return to the online training. This grant writing training series is designed to provide you with basic information about writing for grants to enhance your extension programs. To date, there are six modules developed. Module 1, Getting Started. 2, Creating a Program Logic Model. 3, Identifying Potential Funders. 4, Basic Elements of a Grant. 5, Developing a Grant Budget. And 6, the LSU Ag Center Grant Protocol. This module should take about 30 to 40 minutes to complete. The goal for this series is for the participants to attain the knowledge, skill, and confidence to develop a grant proposal. The objectives include participants to gain knowledge of strategies to start developing a grant proposal, ways to find potential funders, basic components of a grant proposal, and the LSU Ag Center Grant Protocol. The long-term impact expected as a result of sharing this web-based information is that extension agents receive grant funding and implement projects that foster clientele's growth, development, and quality of life. You can do this. You can develop a grant proposal. It's not rocket science. It's sitting down and putting your ideas, your creative thinking into a document designed to explain your project idea to a potential funder. Coming up with program and project ideas is great, but it's wise to fully flesh out your ideas first. In our extension program planning process, we encourage faculty to develop a program logic model. This session covers developing a logic model for your project idea. Let's get started. How many of you have completed a logic model? Logic models are a great way to be thoughtful about and schematically plan an educational project. They can also be tremendously helpful in pulling together a grant proposal. I recommend you develop your logic model before your grant proposal. Then, when you find an appropriate funding opportunity, it will be easy to develop the proposal referring to the logic model you completed. Here is a logic model teaching tool from the University of Wisconsin Cooperative Extension Service. This template highlights what should be included for each section of the logic model. After completing the situation and priority sections that are indicated by the blue arrow on the left side of the page, you finish completing logic model working from the right side of the page to the left. This is indicated by the large red arrow on the right. First are the long-term impacts or conditions that the program would contribute toward. Next are the medium-term outcomes or actions that should occur. Then there are short-term outcomes or learning you expect your participants to gain. The next section you complete is Outputs. This is in both terms of participation and activities. Participation, of course, is who is reached through the program. Activities is what will be done in the program. Determining program inputs that are necessary is next. This encompasses the investments needed to accomplish the program. Then you need to note what assumptions you have regarding the project as well as any external factors or conditions that exist and will have influence on your program model. Finally, you would determine what type of evaluation you will undertake to assess if the expected outcomes and impacts were accomplished. Let's look at each section of the logic model in detail. The first step in developing a logic model is to highlight the situation and priorities regarding the issue. Your situation should include a definition of the importance of the issue, a description of how the issue was identified, an explanation of how education can help address this issue. It also includes identifying the target audience and stating the program goal or goals clearly. The situation could encompass any needs and assets, highlighting symptoms versus problems, and cover stakeholder involvement. 
Priorities might consider any organizational or local program priorities that have been identified. The priorities could address your organization's mission, vision, values, mandates, resources, local dynamics, collaborators, and competitors. Ask yourself, what extension priorities are there that are guiding this program idea? What is our extension mission? What collaborators do we have that would be interested in this program idea? Here's an example of a situation section of a logic model. The 2011 Ag Summary reports the gross farm value of soybeans in XYZ Parish was $15.5 million. Data in the Louisiana Ag Summary has shown a steady decrease in the acreage of soybeans produced in XYZ Parish over the past five years. Reducing input cost by educating producers on ways to improve efficiency can help them stay in business. 120 soybean producers in XYZ Parish will be targeted for this program. The goal of this program is for XYZ Parish soybean farmers to adopt recommended farm practices to achieve sustainable management of their soybean resources and protect the environment. Now let's focus on the right side of the logic model schematic and consider program outcomes and impacts. Long-term effects are considered program impact and short-term and medium-term effects are considered program outcomes. Impacts and outcomes are about changes in conditions, actions, and learning. To complete the impacts and outcomes section, you need to consider what you hope will be achieved as a result of the educational program. First, reflect on long-term impacts the effort might contribute towards or the big effects you would expect your program to contribute to if implemented. These include things like social, civic, economic, and environmental effects. Second, think about any medium-term outcomes that might result. These would be clientele actions you would expect to happen as a result of this program. Actions like changes in behaviors, practices, policies, decision making, and social action. Third, consider short-term outcomes that might occur as a result of the educational program or what learning your participants might gain as a result of this program. This would include creating awareness, increasing knowledge, changing attitudes, developing skills, changes in opinions, aspirations, and motivations. Now let's look at the output section. Outputs encompass the activities that will be offered and who will be targeted for participation in the educational program. To complete the output section, you will cover activities and participation. Activities are what we do. Participation is who we reach. Under activities, you might put down any workshops or meetings you're holding, what service you're providing, any products that you might be developing, training, assessment, facilitation, partnering, or information provided. Next comes who you plan to reach. Participants, clients, agencies, decision makers, and customers. You can also cover in this section uh, assessing whether or not the participants are satisfied with your program. The next section of the logic model is detailing the program investments that will be made or the program inputs. For the input section, list those things that were invested in the program. Things like staff and volunteers, time and money, your research-based information that you're going to provide, materials, equipment, technology, and partners. A logic model should note any assumptions and external factors related to the situation or issue being addressed. Assumptions can include our beliefs and ideas about the problem or situation, the way a program will operate, what the program expects to achieve, how the participants learn and behave, the resources and staff, the external environment or perhaps your knowledge base, and the internal environment. External factors would include aspects that are external to the program that influence the way the program operates. Dynamic systems and interactions include the cultural milieu, biophysical environment, economic structure, housing patterns, demographic makeup, family circumstances, background and experiences of the participants, values, media, policies, 
These are elements that affect the program over which there is little control. The final section of this logic model template is to design your evaluation for the proposed program. A plan to evaluate your program is critical because otherwise how will you know if your goals and objectives are met? The logic model helps with the evaluation design because it provides the program description that guides our evaluation process. A well-crafted logic model helps you as the project director know what and when to measure, match evaluation to the program, and focus on key important information. Let's review two examples of logic models. You have copies of these logic models in the resources you printed out for this webinar. In this example of an Extension Master Gardener program logic model, both the situation and priorities highlight the demand for horticulture information and the development of a trained volunteer group to assist Extension agents in the community in the area of gardening. For inputs, four were noted, including staff, volunteers, funds, and materials. For outputs, four are noted, including curriculum, volunteer training, volunteer planning meetings, and volunteer professional development activities. For output participants, community volunteers are listed. Four short-term outcomes were featured. Five medium-term outcomes were noted, and two long-term impacts were listed. Assumptions include extension continued to have demand for horticulture information and local interest in extension service as extension master gardener volunteers. An external factor included local extension office will have staff, expertise, and resources to support the extension master gardener program. In this school gardening program logic model, you note the situation focuses on addressing childhood obesity and overweightness issues as well as providing experiential learning activities for youth involving community members and parents. As priorities, we note our organization's matching focuses of addressing childhood obesity, overweightness, experiential learning, and community involvement. Under inputs, staff, partners, research-based information, money, and materials are featured. For program outputs, under activities, nine different activities were listed. For program participants, there were teachers, students, school administrators, and volunteers. For short-term outcomes, eight were listed, highlighting increases in awareness, knowledge, skill, motivation, and aspirations. For medium-term outcomes, three were noted. These include growing and harvesting crops, preparing and consuming garden foods, and educating the public on the benefits of gardening. Long-term impacts included youth eating more nutritious foods and working with families to grow home gardens, as well as the community developing an appreciation for the benefits of gardening. Assumptions included staff and school personnel are committed to the project, success at finding a donor, and an optimal garden site for success. External factors included the local extension office has the staff, expertise, and resources to support the effort. Also, no disastrous weather effects, as well as long-term security for the garden and long-term commitment of the volunteers. The next two slides feature a checklist of items that will help you have the strongest possible logic model, according to Susan J. Barkman of Purdue University 2000 in her publication, Utilizing the Logic Model for Program Design and Evaluation. You have a copy of this checklist and the resources you printed out for this webinar. This checklist includes asking the following questions. Does the logic model include a listing of all inputs that will be needed for the program? Does the logic model include details of the activities listed? Does it include a list of characteristics and intended number of targeted participants? Does it make sequential and logical connections between inputs, outputs, and outcomes? The second part of the logic model checklist asks the questions. Do targeted outcomes help fulfill Extension's mission? Do the targeted outcomes represent meaningful benefits or changes for participants? Do targeted outcomes seem reasonable as a result of program participants in a non-trivial way? Do targeted outcomes clearly define the intended scope of the program's influence? Do targeted outcomes help the educator identify both points of success and, and problems the program can correct? and do targeted outcomes provide data that is likely to be effective in communicating benefits to the stakeholders. 
There are two formats of the Logic Model Worksheets that you can download to your computer and use. A horizontal and vertical version. This is the horizontal version. You should have a copy of this worksheet in the materials you printed out earlier. You can return to the ODE Unit SharePoint site in the online training folder to download and save this worksheet to your computer for future use. This is the vertical logic model worksheet and it can also be found on the ODE Training SharePoint site in the online training folder. You may want to pause the training this time and locate these two worksheets. You can also download them to your computer at this time so they'll be convenient when you're ready to develop your own logic model. After completing this module, you might want to begin to complete a logic model for the program you would like to develop a grant for. If you need any help or advice for developing your own logic model, please don't hesitate to contact me. I can be reached through email, phone, or Microsoft link. One resource you might find very helpful was developed as an online course by the University of Wisconsin Extension Service. It is titled Welcome to Enhancing Program Performance with Logic Models and it is available online. It's a very thorough resource and can help you develop top-notch logic models. You may want to review this site for your own personal growth and development. After you complete a logic model for your program idea, you're ready to begin to develop a proposal narrative for your project and as a final step, your budget. Determine what grant funding source you're going to pursue. Review their requirements carefully. I always print out the grant proposal requirements from their website, reading it several times and highlighting key points. Writing a grant narrative doesn't have to be overwhelming. You complete one section at a time until you're done. Let's summarize what we've covered so far. In Module 2, we addressed creating a program logic model. The first task was to write about the situation and priorities of your issue. Next, you developed the impacts and outcomes sections. Then you developed plan program outputs in terms of project participation and project activities. Then you develop your input section of what you will need in the way of program resources. You also noted any assumptions that you were making as well as any external factors that exist. And finally, you designed your program evaluation. Thank you for reviewing this presentation. I hope you will set a personal goal to get started in developing a logic model for your grant idea. Our next module, Module 3, addresses identifying potential funders for grant projects.